DNA, the foundation of human beings. And although we divide ourselves on racial lines, our DNA tells us that we are all 99.9% .9 exactly the same. We are all a near exact copy of one another. The reason we are 99.9% .9 alike is because we all have the same father. We all carry the genes of the first man planted on this earth. And although there are billions of DNA bases within the body, it only takes one letter to turn our brown eyes into blue, our dark skin to light, and our blonde hair to brunette. One letter can change the defining look of our appearance and our bodies. But then again, the change of only one letter can do something else. It can make us immortal. The story of Prometheus is the story of a titan who ruled in heaven. But this titan stole fire from heaven and gave it to man to give man equality with the gods. And because of this, he was cast out. His story is not a fable, and it is in fact a statement of truth. Within each powerful ancient stone monument is a secret, a very powerful secret. And just knowing this secret will put you that much closer to rivaling the living years of angels. The secret that is buried within each of these stones is the secret that will allow man to live for an eternity. This story is unlike anything you have ever heard and it is also unlike anything you will ever understand. It is a struggle for intellect, a struggle for reason, and ultimately, a struggle to deny it. There is a beginning to our version of this earth, and it began 5,000 years ago. The sons of God came down from the heavens and walked with us, lived with us, and taught us everything we needed to know about our world. These beings who from the heavens came were called the Star People, aliens, Anunnaki, and also the Sons of God. However, we also called them by a more definitive title, because we also called them Giants. These Giants were called Kings. And when Sumerian civilization began more than 200,000 years ago, the gods of heaven came down and gave this kingship of immortality to man. The first king, Aululim, ruled 28,000 years. And the second king, Alalga, ruled 36,000 years. Although this number is only 30,000 years of rule, to the life of a human being, this is an eternity. A life of seeing the ones you love live and die, but also living to see the earth die. You stand in the midst of scorched earth and burning flesh with tears running down your cheeks, only to watch the earth renew, live, and thrive again. You find love create sons and daughters only to watch they and the earth die again. In 30,000 years you watch the earth die over and over again and each time you do something you do everything that you can to stop it from happening again. The answer is in your sons and daughters who carry your DNA 
and who will also live to see the rise and fall of earth. And you will tell them, you will live 40,000 years on this earth. Do everything you can, everything within your power, and everything within your will, to stop the earth from dying. One after another, these men of long life ruled the world, and stunningly, eight kings together ruled this earth for more than 240,000 years. Eight men. Archaeologists call this a fable, and even more, the religious who are faced with the Holy Word of God find themselves also wholly in doubt. The Holy Word says Methuselah lived to be 969 years old. And although it is found in the Holy Word, it is rarely viewed as true. The Word of God tells us of these men, and it also tells us that during this period, there were also aliens in our world. They descended from the heavens and began ruling this earth. However, these alien kings and these alien men would also enlighten us with something more powerful than faith or belief. They would enlighten us with something far more powerful. They would enlighten us with the truth. These sons of God never told us to believe in God. And instead, they would unfurl a map of the cosmos and actually show us where God is his house, his throne, and his address. All men who they gave this knowledge to became giants, and they were given one authority, to rule. And no land embodies giants more than the land of Egypt, a land of giants and kings, and also a land of a colossal secret a secret that has been silent for more than 10,000 years. And the secret is here. A cover-up of biblical proportions. When we see these pyramids, we see Orion. And unbelievably, that is the cover-up. The Great Pyramid is the star of this plateau. And archaeology tells us that it was created by the pharaoh Khufu around 2500 BC. This is not a proven fact, and yet Khufu deserves all the credit for our understanding of it. The Great Pyramid has been here, by some estimates, more than 10,000 years. And for the last 5,000 years, no one knew what its purpose was for. However, in 2500 BC, the wise King Khufu figured it out. And when he figured it out, he was undoubtedly floored and then humbled by its knowledge. He found out how holy the pyramid was and also how glorious it was. He then realized what these stones actually meant. And then suddenly he realized he was in the presence of supreme and holy knowledge. After he came to this understanding, he gave order to his sons that would one day be Pharaoh, that if he should die, that the word going forth would say that the three pyramids were created to signify the constellation of Orion. His sons, King Khafre and Menkare, fulfilled his word. And from King Khufu's word, came the deliberate covering over the most holy knowledge on the face of the earth. You will find this hard to believe and also hard to accept. But the pyramids were not made for Orion. Orion is a ruse. It is misdirection. A red herring sent throughout the world for the purpose of leading mankind astray. These three pyramids are created 
to throw humanity off the scent of the knowledge of the Great Pyramid of Egypt. This one pyramid alone holds all the knowledge and all the glory of God and also eternal life. His hope was that the world would see Orion and if we did, the house of God and the secret of eternal life would be safe. The world has never cracked this code, that is, until today, and our knowledge of the pyramid is to be held as something sacred and also something very powerful. 2.5 million stones that lead us 2.5 million light years into space. Our destination is Andromeda, and then Triangulum, and then the Tree of Life. The Great Pyramid tells us where the house of God is found, and it also tells us the place which holds the secret to immortality. And the place is Triangulum. More than 200,000 years ago, a dynasty of alien kings came down from the skies and jump-started our Earth. Each of these kings ruled 20, 30, and 40,000 years. A length of life that is a dream, a fantasy, or what scientists today would call a lie. 200,000 years ago, they lived, and 50,000 years ago, they left us proof in rocks. A proof so holy it is called the hand of God and its place on earth echoes throughout the cosmos. How can we be so foolish? And how can we be so blind? Everything they are telling us is not to glorify them. They are telling us this in order to save us. To save us from a horror of our own making, a death that we bring upon ourselves because we are so arrogant that we believe that our technology of the last 3,000 years is greater than their warnings of the last 100,000 years. In order for us to understand this part of the journey, we must shake off our old ideas and our current understandings. Nearly everything that we have been taught of our history isn't true. Everything we think we know, we must abandon. It is the only way to understand what comes next. And if we don't unlearn what we've learned, and if we don't change our way of thinking, then we will all end up like the last world, destroyed and wiped away. Nevertheless, there is another symbol that is found in nearly every country in the world a symbol of Egypt, and yet it is a symbol that no one understands. It is a symbol that is even more important than the pyramid itself. It is a holy clue left to every one of us that tells us how we can become immortal. It is found in Europe, Africa, Asia, the Americas, and even in the United States Capitol. We admire it, we marvel at it, and yet we have no idea what it is for. The obelisk is given to us by the giants, and it reaches into the sky for only one purpose, and the purpose is for each of us to look up. To raise our eyes from the earth and into the heavens and in the cosmos. Standing at the height of clouds, it is a symbol of beauty, riches, wisdom, and holiness. And yet it is also something else even more important than all of these. It is also a map. Every obelisk stretches into the heavens and dares man to look up. And even more, it dares us to comprehend it. It is a simple and humble design 
it is nothing but a long square pillar of stone. However, at the very top is an incriminating clue of what its true purpose is for. At the top of this majestic godstone is a very small pyramid. The pyramid at the tip of the obelisk represents the house of God, and it is placed high above man so that we can look to the stars and to the clouds and know where we go after death. Because this tiny pyramid on top represents the constellation of Triangulum. And written on every obelisk is a hieroglyphic or triangulum, which is also a very thin pyramid. Next to the house of God is the place of eternal life, the Ankh. And although your historians will tell you many different things, the Ankh is actually a symbol for a tree. Next to triangulum and the house of God, there is another constellation called the Tree of Life. These two symbols are always present on nearly every obelisk in Egypt, and they are always next to one another. This knowledge is very powerful, and it is also holy, and it is meant for royalty, kings, queens, and priests. However, it is also meant for the Chosen. The Chosen are those of us who are selected and who will journey to this place in the cosmos. It is for those of us who will leave the safety of our earth and journey to a strange place in the outer darkness of space in order to save our earth. It is an ancient truth, a modern hope, and a technological aspiration. And children of men, we can get there. And more importantly, we can also safely return to this earth. In this Sumerian relief, a giant is instructing a man to the meaning of the obelisk. The giant standing next to the obelisk is at the height of the obelisk, which tells you how great in size our teachers were. But then, notice the size of the obelisk and the giant. And now also notice how small the man is in comparison. This very small man is no ordinary man. For this tiny man seated on this throne is actually a king. And only royalty is given this knowledge. The house of God and the place of eternal life are confirmed here. While helping us to build our world, these giants began building our minds, and they did this by creating this, a megalithic stone structure that has defied the ages and confounded our intellect. They are stone structures that could have been created by God himself, and to a lesser degree, aliens. Each stone monument is an enduring enigma that baffles our new and supreme technological age. Massive structures that are impossible to recreate, and yet there is something within us that tells us that there is more to this story than what meets the eye. All who feel this way are correct. Your soul does not lie, and there is a lot more here than what is perceptible to the human mind. Within each massive stone are the answers to our greatest questions, because each stone contains the knowledge of the world that was before our own. Each aged and craggy rock is well fed and made fat with the blood of man. They hold the bones and brawn of a dead and ancient age, an age that was exactly like our own. We see their faces, we touch their hands, and we still don't know them. After more than 50,000 years, they're still reaching out to us. 
and begging us to come closer, to look closer, to listen, to try, to understand. They are enigmas to which there has never been an answer. That is, until now. They are older than our world and greater than our minds. And yet nearly every star-faring vehicle that visits this earth also visits each one of them. These stone monoliths are also a UFO beacon. For as many years as there are these stones, the same can be said of UFOs. These unidentified flying machines are consistently seen and photographed near each of these ancient sites. No matter what side of the globe we're on, if there is a megalithic stone structure, UFOs will come to it. Each of these well-known locations are hotspots for UFO visitations. They are regularly seen in each location and almost like clockwork. Each stone structure is a creation of great importance for alien life. And to the hour, the aliens always return. It is a conundrum that every ufologist and intellectual has wrestled with for years. And yet, after 5,000 years of research, we are still clueless. The reason we are clueless is here. The Great Pyramid of Egypt. It is a fountain of knowledge and the spirit of a supreme designer. It leads us into the stars and also to the house of our God. And yet there is something else about this structure that links every human being in the world to it. And the link is here. A humble and unobtrusive stone that is in and of itself nothing more than a rock. However, looks can be very deceiving because each of these stones will tell us the greatest story on earth. A story that will humble you. A story that will crumble you. Because it is also a story that will break your heart in two. These mysterious gems of stone are more valuable to mankind than any other gemstone on this earth. All of the precious jewels of this world cannot equal the value of just one of these stones. These worn and craggy rocks are made precious by the hands of those who made them, and they are blessed by the hands of those who painted them 50,000 years ago. These stones are aged, but they do not age. They are flawed and yet perfect in every way. They are more important than anything else on the surface of this earth because the builders created them for only one purpose. They created them for us. They were created with a message that was made to endure the ravages of time so that 50,000 years later we would receive it. And this message in stone is a holy message a powerful message and a supreme message. On the face of nearly every great stone structure around the world is a hand, a human hand, a hand made to signify that of human beings and also a hand made to signify the hand of the God of the cosmos. These reflections from a time long gone are made for a time called right now. Their world was ours, and their world is ours today. Over a hundred thousand years ago, the earth lived and then died, and it has been living and dying ever since. However, nearly one hundred thousand years ago, they painted, they chiseled, and they carved a great warning, a warning so powerful that it will separate the soul from the spirit. Whether we like it or not, they who came before us were better than us, and their faith was greater than our own. In 5000 BC, the sons of God 
and the star people came to our world and they restarted our civilization. Within this civilization is the knowledge of what killed the previous world. They who survived put their lives on the line in order to give us clues about the real story of the end of the world. They are paintings, pottery, pyramids, and stelas. And yet they are something else even more astounding. They are all clandestine messages. Sophisticated and stylish, priceless knowledge disguised as common artwork. We have seen these works for thousands of years and for thousands of years we have all remained oblivious. This is the tree of life and above it is the symbol of God. This symbol is the first symbol of God found in this world and it is Sumerian. Sumeria is the first civilization on earth, circa 5000 BC. We are taught that during this period, mankind was in the Stone Ages, brutes and savages who were just learning how to write and to clothe themselves. The world was separated by vast oceans and seas, and mankind had no contact between the continents. We are taught that the cradle of civilization is the Middle East and Sumeria. Unfortunately, everything you have ever been taught about our beginnings is no longer of any value anymore. Brace yourselves and gather your hearts for what comes next is the wiping away of all of our histories. It is the end of our world. The oceans of the world are vast and there is no way a 5,000-year-old boat made with primitive tools could have ever crossed these oceans. This is true, and yet, not quite. This is a 5,000-year-old Sumerian symbol of God. It is a simple design denoting a circle with wings of a bird, and it is also a symbol of power and dominion over man. However, where we find this symbol will completely dethrone the history of our world. Look closely. This is Sumeria, a desert all alone with no boats, just logs and rafts. However, you find this same symbol far away in Persia or modern day Iran. And you also find it in Egypt. And even further, you find it in Babylon. And then, unbelievably, it is also found across the oceans, thousands of miles away, in a place that will stun you. This is Nazca, Peru. This one God and his symbol of dominance was all over the earth and in a time we are taught that there was no contact between the continents. It is astounding. It is staggering. And it is also enlightening. The men of this one God were all over our world building and teaching mankind how to live on this planet. We also find these men and this God and its symbol here in Bolivia. And we also will find them in a place which will silence you. This is the Americas and this is the house of the Mayans. Yes, these men taught the Mayans. This Mayan symbol is exactly like all the other symbols which mean God and the house of God and it is found all over the entire world. 
and in a time where science tells us that this is impossible. How can we explain this? How? There is more to say because there is something else. This symbol doesn't just mean God. It means something else, even more powerful. It means flight. Air travel in the skies. When we look at every pictogram of the ancients, we see angels. And we see them because our faith tells us that they are nothing but angels. But in the ancient world, wings did not mean angels. Wings meant flight. Any pictogram or portrait bearing wings means only one thing. Flight and the ability to fly. Within each stela of God are the wings of a bird and a round disc at its center. The wings of the bird represent the flying power given to the disc. Ancient man would probably call this a flying disc. However, today we call this a flying saucer. A flying disc that is not just a disc. And unbelievably, a more perfect description is found on the walls of Egypt. This flying disc symbol is at the core of the Egyptian belief. A disc that has the light of the sun, and many believe that the Egyptians called this the sun disc. It was bright and luminescent like the sun, which means that it glowed. It also had wings, and in their skies, it looked much like it does in our skies. Flying. And before you question yourselves and say, how can this be? The reason there are so many secrets hidden in paintings and carvings is because none of us on earth are supposed to know. We are not supposed to know how the world dies or what happens at the end of the world. Every clue we have is left to us by a brave man or a brave woman. Even at the threat of death, they cared for our lives more than they cared for their own. The winged sun disk is only the beginning because the winged sun disk leads us to the winged serpent. And this serpent is so powerful and so glorious and so beyond belief that this knowledge alone will drive you to the brink of despair. Take hold of your hearts, because this is the end of everything we have ever been taught and the beginning of our new age. The serpent is a symbol of wisdom, power, and also God. The winged serpent is found in every country around this entire world. A serpent is sometimes called a dragon because it flies and breathes fire. It is more than fire. Hold your hearts because this knowledge will light a fire of wisdom within you and there is no extinguishing it. This is an Egyptian hieroglyph for a winged serpent. However, Look closer and closer. This is a serpent. And this is a serpent stretched out. And now a serpent with wings. This children of men is us.
These new alien kings live so long in order to pass down this knowledge of our world to the next world. And they did this to ensure the safety of mankind. Our great kings received this immortality from heaven, but we now know that immortality is merely the changing of letters in our DNA. An ancient man who was to die at the age of 40 years old would, after gene manipulation, die at the ripe old age of 40,000 years old. Our greatest theologians and scientists call these lengths of years exaggerations, falsities, and lies. It is impossible for this to be true, and yet all written records of the ancients say that they derive their power from the gods. These flying serpents sustained many nations by bringing food and supplies, and also they gave them something else that is with us today. For without these flying serpents, many of our peoples would not have made it. The flying serpent is also the symbol of God. And the symbol is of a flying disc, and it is also two wings, and it is also a serpent. And yes, these winged serpents gave our people medicine, medicine that would save us. And with this medicine, these same gods also gave us the power of immortality. You find in the end, our enduring questions about how the ancients lived have answers. The answer is, is that modern man and ancient man existed at the same time. They coexisted on earth in the same place, in the same space, and at the same time. Ancient man was ancient, and modern man with the power of the serpent was God. He was a man and a woman who had wings on their back. And this means he and she could fly. And the symbol of a man who can fly is always the head of a bird. And the symbol of a woman who can fly is the same. All of this knowledge leads us to understanding the most dominant nation the world has ever known. Egypt. The reason they knew so much about the sun disk is because they were the only nation left on this earth who could still fly. It is a secret that completely bypasses the intellect of even the most intelligent scientist and archaeologist. However, the confirmation is here. This is Tutankhamun, and although we've seen this mask for a millennia, its true knowledge escapes us. Upon the head of the boy king are two serpents. Look closer. Closer. Only one is a serpent. The one on the left is actually a bird. The boy king could fly, and his reign was protected by the power of flight. The serpent slithers on its belly, which denotes dominance over all the land. However, there is something else about this serpent and the winged serpent that will send you reeling, and this secret of secrets will destroy all that was. The secret is Egyptian, however, the secret is found here. This is Greece. In the ancient world, Greece was known for its literature and its famed storytelling. The Greeks, while telling a tale, 
would take many liberties with the truth of a story. Even if the story was true, Greek writers would grossly embellish it, change it, and completely revise it for the purpose of making a better story. The Greeks borrow heavily from ancient Egyptian culture. The Greeks also turn a true story into a great myth. Because in the ancient world, a myth is always a better story. Nonetheless, there is one myth that the Greeks have created that is shrouded in ancient lore, and at the same time, shrouded in the greatest revelation of knowledge we will ever know. It is the story of a horrific woman, and yet it is also the greatest mystery of the last 5,000 years. This demonic woman was named Medusa, a mythic creature of a woman whose face was of beauty, but her hair was full of snakes and serpents. Medusa could kill a man just by gazing into his eyes and turning him to stone. But the Greek tale could do something else even more disturbing. This tale, however false it may be, can change the entire world. Why? Because the tale of Medusa is true. Yes, she has a hair full of serpents, but what unravels this world-altering woman is the fact that this story is taken from Egypt and also from the house of the gods. This is the Medusa of Greece. And this is her origin, Egypt. She has been staring us in the face for 5,000 years and we all look and see and yet we see nothing. If you look closer, you'll see that there was a great woman of Egypt who also had snakes coming out of her hair. And she too was beautiful and also powerful. And as you gaze upon her, realize her name was not Medusa. This goddess was named Isis. She is the goddess of Egypt and queen of the afterlife. But look closely at the face of this queen. Closer. And now look into her hair. And what you see, serpents. Medusa is based on this woman. And what makes this queen so beautiful is the knowledge that a serpent rules a lamb and one serpent rules all of Africa and the Middle East. Gaze upon the beauty of this queen and you will see in her hair not just one serpent. You see seven. This queen and her seven serpents indicates the fact that she had dominion over seven lands. And how she ruled these lands is on her crown and above the serpents because what is above the serpents is a bird, an eagle with wings, which cover all seven serpents. And what this means is that this queen had dominion over all seven continents of land on the face of this earth. We are not worthy. In the ancient world, the hand of these technological mortals was to the ancients the hand of God. They left these ancient clues in plain sight, hoping that one of us will come. Before each world died, they secretly placed a sophisticated writing in stone and also in paint. And each stone worker and each stone painter prayed that one day one will be born 50, 60, or 70,000 years in the future who will understand a hope and a prayer that he or she will know what this means and also know what to do. 
These stones, however crude and undesirable as they may appear, are in fact worth more than gold. Within every megalithic monstrosity is a Christ, a God, and salvation. Because understanding these aged rocks will give birth to all three. The knowledge found in each of these stones will transform you, and to know what they mean will completely change you into something that is greater than anything you could ever imagine. To all of the world, these are just pyramids, a boring heap of rock, and a mysterious triangle made of stone. However, it is the Mayans and the Aztecs which give us our greatest clue as to the meanings of these pyramids. Because they each called these man-made mountains something else. They called them Teotihuacan. And this holy and powerful name means the place where man became God. And yes, this is true, because to understand this knowledge and harness its power will make a man and a woman greater than just a man and woman. It is the Prometheus Stone, and understanding its purpose will lift man so high that it will make man equal with that of his dreams, because within each stone is the knowledge of immortality. Our last gasps of life is understanding these rocks. They're all granite, they're all megaliths, and yet there is one thing we have missed. They all carry an electromagnetic field. Nearly every megastructure has an electrical field or current running through it. This is the part of the human story where the mystery of life ends. These electromagnetic properties not only serve the ancients, but they will also serve us. In the end of our world, all technology will be disabled and all high-tech power sources will be eliminated. However, these magnetically charged stones act as a compass and each is aligned true north with many giving off a charge so powerful it can move the needle on a compass. This function of the stones is to allow the process of flight to continue even after the world dies. Nonetheless, there is one more thing about the stones that is more important than all the others. The stones upon sight, they amaze you, they stagger you, and they humble you. That is the purpose of their creation. And yet there is another purpose of its creation, which is the foundation of all creation. The stone structures are made for its most important purpose. And the most important purpose of the stones is for us to touch it. Each stone structure is made for us to come to it, to walk on it, to touch it, and to kiss it. We run our fingers over it, our lips against it, and we lay the sweat of our brow upon it. We rub our face against it and our skin across it as our hair abounds as it falls upon it. Because there is another reason these stones are charged with electromagnetic properties. And they are charged because these stones are created for us to touch them. And when we touch them, they collect our DNA. 
every drop of sweat, every hair, saliva, skin cells, and even our air is taken into the rock. These stones are data collection devices. It is a subtlety of genius and the hand of our Creator, and it is also the reason UFOs return to these sites. They return to these sites to collect our data. These stones can decipher our DNA and can reveal the health of our world, the health of our people, and even potential diseases. And yet, these Prometheus stones are also Messiah stones. Because believe it or not, if we fail to reach the Stargate, these stones are our last hope. The last hope for humanity. Because these stones contain the DNA and atmosphere of millions of human beings. Our DNA and microbial DNA are stored within each stone and should our world die unbelievably we will only need one stone each stone has been staring us in the face for thousands of years each stone with our fingerprint clearly visible each stone with the symbol of DNA telling us in these stones are human beings. Believe it or not, you can take one of these stones and hurdle it into space and it can travel for 10,000 years. There is something about rock that holds DNA, microbes, and signatures of various life forms. If this rock should find itself in a habitable environment, this Messiah stone will bring forth life. It will bring forth our lives. And we and our world will live again. This knowledge is dismissed by our unenlightened as a fantasy. But the stones do not lie. And the Stargate confirms it. We will leave this earth and enter a gateway, a wormhole. And then suddenly, we are there. We will be greeted by aliens who we will come to find in the end are in fact us. They are what we were 45,000 years ago. And because of this leap in years, they will be able to show us many things. They will enlighten us and prepare us for our return journey to this earth. We will visit with them for a month or so, and then we will set out on our journey to return to this earth. However, when we return to this earth, more than 2,000 years will have passed. The world we once knew will be gone, and it will be replaced with lush forest, jungles, and grasslands, and also foreign and new peoples living and thriving on a land that was once ours. When we come down to this world and our earth, we will be enlightened, our lifespan will be increased, and we will be full of knowledge. However, when we walk out of our ships, in our strange clothing, and with strange lights coming from our faces, we will appear to be alien. We will greet our new relatives and the new peoples of this earth but they will find us to be very fearful. They will find us to be alien. And because of our appearance and because of where we come from, they will call us the star people. 
We will live with them. We will teach them. We will love them. And we will rule them. Nevertheless, the knowledge of the Stargate and its location must always be protected. This knowledge cannot be known to mankind until they have matured into the technological age, an age that will certainly bring our Earth to another day of dying. For they too will endure the hardship and the test of life as we have. And if they are worthy, they will find it. The Stargate is here, and the Stargate is waiting for us. There are steps that we must take before we can reach it. And the first step is to shed our skins of all the things that divide us. For we will walk into the cosmos and into the new world of knowledge with new hope and a new tomorrow. We cannot carry our old world and our old ways with us. We must shake off our old clothes and our old beliefs. We cannot go into the cosmos as Jews, Christians, Muslims, or Hindu. For this part of our journey, we can't be any of these things. And if we are, then we are not ready to go. For this part of our human story, in order for us to be successful, we can only be one thing. Humans. There is one more thing about these stones that I am compelled to tell you. The stones invite mankind and they beg mankind to do only one thing. They invite us to touch it. They want our fingertips and they want our DNA. They want this information for a very humbling reason. They are looking for their companion. They are looking for their DNA counterpoint in each of us. Each stone searches for its relative, its mate, their DNA, their match. If one of us should visit these monuments, we will be drawn to it. And when we come closer, we will place our fingers on these rocks. And then something strange will happen. When we touch the rock, it will touch you back. An electrical charge will hit you and you will lose all consciousness. Your vision will go black. A flicker of light will pass before your eyes. Power will be restored to your body. And then suddenly, your bodily systems will resume operation. You will gather your composure and you will wonder what happened. You'll stand by these stones and you'll look around into the sky and be full of amazement. You will hear the voices of those who died 500 million years ago. You will see angels, aliens. You will see the living and the dead. You will see a world that you never even knew existed. You will stand in a desert and see deep into the cosmos and you will understand that which you cannot. And then you will see something else that is more frightening than anything you can ever imagine. Because what you will see is forever. One who touches this stone and is a DNA match will experience all of this. And every word I am telling you is true. 
And the reason I can tell you this with such a surety is because it happened to me.